so starting with the mammary gland the first thing which we are going to cover is going to be the embryology of human breast and keeping it very compact keeping it very small uh, the human breast is basically ectodermal in origin at the time of development um, the human embryo has three layers ectoderm mesoderm and endoderm from uh, endoderm all the organs develop mesoderm leads to muscles and bones of the organism and the ectoderm is going to lead to the outer organs or you know things that are protruding out or like skin or ears or you know breast gland sorry a mammary gland or breast tissue all of these thing, uh, things develop from ectoderm. Um, breast is basically a modified sweat gland. Uh, there is a milk line that is extending from the axilla to the inguinal region. Wait. This is the milk line that extends from axilla and ends in the inguinal region. Breast tissue can develop anywhere along this line. And if it develops at any place other than the interior breast tissue, at that time, uh, it is then called, sorry, it is then called ectopic breast because ectopic means growth of tissues, um, growth of tissues from somewhere which is not their natural place to grow with, right? So basically the natural place the natural location of the breast tissue is supposed to be the interior chest wall but if it grow, grows anywhere other than the interior chest wall be it near axilla be it near inguinal be it in the abdomen then it would be termed as ectopic breast okay so that is it i have covered ectopic breast well congenitally uh, breast are, could be of three types uh, but this congenital means congenital means something that is by birth a condition that is present by birth so there could be amnesia that is absence of breast tissue polymesia multiple breast tissue or polythelia that is multiple nipples moving forward to the histology uh, breast tissue can be divided into into two phases we have a non lactating phase then we will have a lactating phase uh, let's first cover the lactating phase okay so what is lactating phase after birth uh, the breast tissue of the mother starts secreting milk out so that phase of the breast tissue is called lactating phase right secretion of milk by exocytosis and the very first milk secreted right after birth from uh, the breast tissue is called colostrum it is good for baby's immune system it is yellow in color and it has ige immunoglobulins just for this uh, lactating phase of the breast tissue and now to talk about the non lactating phase but um, on microscope the histology of breast tissue looks something like this we have tubular breast tissue with uh, connective tissue surrounding it okay and alveoli develops during early weeks of pregnancy and lactation begins after birth Now moving towards gross anatomy of the breast. All mammals have mammary glands. Basically that's why mammals are called mammals because they have mammary glands. Mammary glands are modified skin glands or modified sweat glands and they become functional in adolescent females or nursing mothers. At times, breast tissue can be also uh, be found in men uh, it could be due to any genetic disorder, that is, it could be due to Klinefelter syndrome, or it can develop due to any condition, any diseases like liver cirrhosis, that is liver failure, failure in liver cirrhosis, 
men develop breast tissue then um, there are few prostate diseases and during the treatment of those diseases breast tissue can develop as well in men so all these conditions where there is development of breast tissue in men that is called gynecomastia so mammary glands are basically located on the anterior chest wall they are um present vertically from the second rib to the sixth rib and horizontally they are extended from the sternum side of the sternum to the axillary region and around the nipple is a blackened a darkened area that is called areola right and the tail of the breast tissue or the mammary gland gets extended into the axilla so gland is basically made up of fat which is at mix with tibio alveolar pattern of tissues it has lobes lobules ducts and which you know are exposed to the outer surface through nipple basically mammary gland is an apocrine gland in exocrine glands the secretion can be divided into three types we have holocrine we have merocrine we have apocrine in merocrine only the secretion takes place from the cell in apocrine the secretion along with the top part of the cell gets pinched off and in holocrine the whole cell uh, gets secreted with the secretion example of holocrine would be sebaceous glands example of apocrine gland would be mammary gland an example of merocrine gland would be clavicular gland cooper's ligament or suspensory ligament or ligamentum suspensoria mammaria is the connective tissue that fixes the skin to the pectoral fascia like uh, this is the anterior chest wall and this is the human breast human breast is held in space is held in its position with the anterior chest wall or is strengthened by the cooper's ligament present here okay this is cooper's ligament fifteen to twenty lactiferous ducts open under the nipple as i have already made this thing clear and oh okay this is again the cross sectional and the cut section of the breast tissue ectopic breast i've already told what is it blood supply a uh, human breast is basically supplied by three main arteries that is internal mammary arteries lateral thoracic and thoracoacromial arteries and posterior intercostal arteries its venous drainage is through axillary vein and subclavian and intercostal and internal thoracic veins also drain the breast now if we look at the nerve supply breast is a uh, innervated by anterior and lateral cutaneous branches of fourth to sixth intercostal nerves intercostal nerves are the nerves that are present around the rib and its anterior and lateral cutaneous branches supply the human breast tissue lymphatic drainage if you look at that the um, lymphatic drainage of the breast it either drains into the parasternal nodes or the nodes of the opposite breast or the inferior phrenic nodes but the main uh, drainage of the human breast remains the same that is axillary lymph nodes okay these are the breast quadrants if we consider the sternum to be here and axilla to be here this is medial inner upper corner 
this is this is this is medial inner lower corner lateral outer upper corner lateral lower upper corner and if you look at its drainage lateral quadrant drains limb to axillary node medial quadrant drains lymph nodes to parasternal nodes and lower quadrant drains lymphatic drainage uh, has lymphatic drainage to inferior phrenic or abdominal nodes why is it important uh, there is this condition called pudi orange that can develop if the lymphatic system of the breast is blocked what does pudi orange mean um you've seen an orange an orange has many pits on it many pits on its outer surface so something similar appears on the breast breast appears to be pitted uh, and if it starts develop dimples as well then that means that the cooper's ligament of the breast is now involved and this condition can be present in breast cancer or due to any inflammatory condition or cellulite okay what is a mammogram mammogram is a radiological study of breast tissue and in which breast shadow is analyzed and uh, it shows glandular patterns parenchymal and duct branching fibrous elements and nodules or uh, calcifications are noted if any sort of cancer or any sort of me um, malignancy is kept from mammogram we will then go to mri so that all type of cancers could be detected this is what a mammogram looks like these are abnormal axillary lymph nodes this is the breast tissue and this is the calcification or a cancer in the breast tissue